So welcome to the Selling Leader Real Estate Panel, Dallas, Fort Worth edition. Today we're talking with Lorraine Brock, who's the founder of Get Organized, which is a local company that specializes in organizing, downsizing, staging, packing, and even cleaning. Uh, and we're really thrilled to have her. So thanks for joining us, Lorraine. Thank you, Wendy, for having me. Yeah. And so I love to start these panel questions with um, what's special about Dallas, Fort Worth? Uh, it could be quirky, it could be silly, it could be serious, but something that you won't find anywhere else in the U.S. Well, there's a couple things, and, I, and I've lived, I was born and raised uh, in Dallas County, which is obviously Dallas, and uh, currently live right outside in the suburban area, so we're not in the city, uh, but uh, close by. Uh, a couple, one of the real funny things, and I guess it's a Southern thing, but definitely you'll notice it here, is that, uh, and, I, and I really noticed this myself when I was in school, like when I was younger, is you would go to a restaurant or go someplace and ask for a Coke. Oh. And I was really in my mind thinking, Dr. Pepper. And they, and they like, okay, you know, they, it's like you, they'll bring you a Coke and I'm like, oh no, this is really, I, I want Dr. Pepper. So Coke can mean all kinds of things here. It can mean a Sprite. It could mean a Dr. Pepper or it could mean a root beer. I mean, you just, you have to want a Coke and they'll say, what kind of Coke do you want? Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> so That's we're, you know, funny. I think up north or ever, you know, some other places they would use like soda or pop, pop or the right. specific name. Right. So that's something a little quirky here. One of the um, great, I want to mention a couple things here. Uh, Tex-Mex. I mean, Tex-Mex, you can go anywhere in the United States and try to get Mexican and it is Mexican food is like subpar. I'm telling you, Tex-Mex is where it's at. Really? And then I think really the Dallas area uh, you know, you're bumped up between two big cities, right? right? They have two different types of experiences, lifestyles, uh, very different and um, just something for everybody. But we have an outstanding strong economy. Girl, I want to tell you, if, I, <laughs> if we're the number two state in the United States, that we are that people are flocking to right. uh, just a great economy. We have great leaders. I'm just telling you, it's, you know, and it's evident in, in the people that are finding jobs here. And that means people are making, you know, there's jobs here, which means for my kind of business, people are moving here. That's really a benefit for us, the staging, the packing and packing. So that feeds into that small business when you have that kind of economy. Right, right. Um, you know, I wanted to mention before you, before we get any further, when you're talking about Coke, we don't even drink like it's Pepsi. Like I don't know if this is like a Pepsi territory in in Pittsburgh, but like we don't. It's weird, but I I meant to share that with you. But yeah, you know, well, I, I think I, Dr Pepper is the drink of choice here, oh, or right? either Texas tea. Yeah, I would say so. What is Texas tea? I should know. What well, Texas just tea. you know, sweet tea, tech iced tea. Oh, okay. You okay. know, people think tea sometimes up north. They think hot tea. Well, down here it's right. iced tea. Right, right, right. That's so funny. You know, and it's funny you talk about uh, relocating here. I'm, I, I'm a big, big fan of Lindy Chapman, who does a lot within consumer real estate. And she moved to Boston from Dallas, and she's actually moving back. And, and she said, it's just overwhelming the amount of companies and people that are transitioning to this area, um, you know, and just to start, start fresh with their, their business and the growth. So it's a really exciting time for you guys. It is, um, and you and you'll and obviously it it people you get quality workers you get a lot of diverse you know work culture uh, people that have different skills so across the board it's great yeah that's <laughs> great. awesome so in regards to just you not not Lorraine business but you personally so where did you grow up uh, I know you mentioned uh, Dallas and you've lived there all your life like where do you live now. Sure. Um, I live in the Collin County area, which is outside of Dallas County. And I was like, born and raised in uh, Garland, Texas, which is a city right out of Dallas, but still Dallas County. And uh, spent a small stint of my life in Waco, Texas, where we had our first two children and then moved back um, because obviously work, I think work, the, the obviously work was here. Uh, and raise my uh, all my children, including having the third one here. And so now we live in a suburban area right outside of uh, of Garland area, and we love it. Been here all my life, and in fact, been living in in this area, this home, for probably about twenty two years. Oh wow! Okay, so then my next question will be really easy for you. So, 
in your specific area, um, you know, we usually write explore categories um, and talk about different cities. And we used to always highlight restaurants and businesses um, just to give them some exposure, but it's been a little challenging because I have, it's really hard to tell like, are you still open? Are you, are you just doing dine-in? Are you doing like, can I come in? Like, I have no idea. So we're asking our panel leaders instead uh, to support the small businesses in your area, favorite place to eat, favorite coffee shop, or favorite place to go with other people when, when it's like a good time sure, to do sure. that again. Well, our favorite currently takeout only, but was dine-in is called a, uh, called sticky rice. Okay. And their reviews are outstanding. It's, um, I guess it's Thai food, but they can do it all kinds of levels. And in fact, me and my husband, we eat out a lot and they give us, they gave, they give us, you know, like complimentary t-shirts to wear in there. Oh, really? <laughs> they're like, you guys, you, you're ordering a takeout. Here's a dessert to go on us. I mean, they're just so friendly and uh, all family ran and absolutely yummy. There's not anyone we've taken there that doesn't like that kind of food that has not loved it. Right. Um, I'm not a coffee drinker. Uh, I'm more of the kind of hot chocolate with the whipping cream and the oh, sprinkles. Yes. See, and like when, that. when I say coffee, my coffee is like mochas with all that junk on top of it. So that I, I count hot chocolate as a good, a good. You drink it and all that whipping cream is like gives you a little mustache right there. Yeah, um, yeah. So I'm going to actually mention, uh, I think it's what I even wrote the last, it's called Edith's French Bistro. Okay. Always call it uh, Edith's. But it's over in Frisco, so a little bit north of the Dallas area, but definitely, I mean, there's an Ikea over there, so you know it's got to be a right, happy right. place, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, it is a, when you walk in, my thing is not necessarily coffee, it's hot chocolate, but desserts. I'm just like oh, a dessert lover. Yes. You're and you walk in and, and oh yes, it's like, oh, man, I got to go. Let's just finish this interview later. I got to go there. <laughs> Um, they well, you walk something. in and you have a showcase of just glass cases of all these desserts that you can get up after dinner and go over there and pick them or take them home. Uh, it has adorable outdoor seating and lighting. I mean, like romantic or spring Mother's Day, like a tea room. I mean, but it's not a tea room like your grandmother's tea room. Right, right. Modern. So I have to throw those that out there. That's just my my son took me for Mother's Day and I was like. This is a date night place too. Yeah, like I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So, so when you pivoted to the organizing and, and the staging, how did that start? Would it, were you always interested in that? Were you like an incredibly organized child, or did it come later in life? I was a very organized child. I would actually rearrange my room and my drawers and dust. And, and my mother, there wasn't very much you could do in your own room. I mean, be honest, you have like a 10 by 10, 10 by 12 room. And I'm like, well, you know, the, the lamp can go here. <laughs> and then the next time the lamp can go back there. Um, but I, I love cleaning and organizing. I had yellow, bright yellow carpet in my room. So I would keep this sign on my door on the outside that said, when you enter, you had to take off your shoes. I mean, my friends had to keep it really nice. Um, so I was always really organized and, and clean. Um, when, I, when I got married right out of high school, we waited about four years to have our first child. And I wanted I, my whole life goal, and this sounds basic, but it has brought so much joy to my life is just to be a great, awesome wife and mom. I mean, that was my priority. So when I had our first uh, son, I quit work and I was, I homeschooled, public school, private school. I had no ambition to be in anything other than my family. Nice. And as my third son got into the middle of his fifth grade year, I said, you know, I want to make some little extra money and let me, what I'm, let me think what I'm good at, what I love. And I actually love speaking. I actually love teaching and that turned into organizing workshops and classes, which I was being paid to do. And people then later said, Hey, Lorraine, can you, you talk about it, but can you actually do the work? Right. And that led into the physical organization of people's home, which led into staging, which led into packing and so forth. Right. And so how many years have you been doing that now? So we're, I think in our 14th year, wow. um, and I really don't do much of the organizing anymore. In fact, I don't even, obviously, I don't even know a lot of the stuff that goes on in the office all the time because I've hired exceptional people that are even better gifted uh, than I am to make, the, you know, make those decisions and run the business. I still do, I'd say, about 80% of the training mm -hmm. of the organizers that come in. 
uh, making sure we're all on the same page, but uh, I'm still very involved in it, just not necessarily at the client level every day. Right. And, and you know, what I wanted to highlight is, you know, as a woman myself running a company, like it's really nice to highlight and support other women. And I know almost your whole staff, if not all of them are women, is correct? Correct. We have, uh, we have about three gentlemen that we call support staff, which are the muscle men, we call yes. them, yes. Uh, because they're just physically things we can't do. And not that a guy can't organize, but you have to have, when you're going into a home with a family and a mom with kids, and you have to have someone that's been there, done that, lived that. And, you know, you, it's more, very much, you know, more of the women's industry in that or their gifted skills. But if you can find me a guy that can be awesome at that, right. more power to you. Right. Come on, come on down. That's right. <laughs> come on down to Dallas. Okay. So, so, you know, on our platform, it's a lot of people that are thinking about selling their home and, and, you know, it's funny because they think about it, but until they list their home, like they're just kind of sitting there. And, you, and so that's why we made our platform to let people let publicly uh, know, like tell other people, hey, I'm going to sell my home in like the summer. Um, but so then there's that like five, 10 months where they know, but they're not doing anything. And, and it's why I wanted to talk to you because I feel like that time is a great time to start getting organized um, and, and decluttering. So like, what are those first steps from, hey, I think I want to sell my home. Like, where do you start with all your junk? Sure. Well, there's a lot of things other than just getting rid of the junk. There's sometimes maintenance that needs to be done, right? That you right. can't even see because the clutter and the junk are covering it up. Right. So I think the very first step you need to do is to start going through the items in your home because first of all, you don't know what you want to get rid of until you know what you have. So therefore you've got to really look at every, put your hands on every pen, mm -hmm. on every set of glasses, on every old cell phone. Like you've got to decide what it is, if it's worth keeping, if you need to do something with it. Like you might find old cell phones that have information on it that needs to possibly be pulled off. So we would start with the decluttering first of the home, sort of making categories like electronics and office supplies and seeing how much of those things you really have and then deciding on what you keep. That would be the first step is going in there and decluttering. Um, and we don't actually say, I, I wanna get rid of that, rid of that, rid of that, because really most people, again, like I go back to, you don't know what to get rid of until you know what you have. And you're more inclined to get rid of more or the things that are really unnecessary if you know that you have 40, sets of notepads and you really, really right. need 10, but you don't know that when you just pick up one of them, right? So decluttering is the first thing. And then at that point, you know, there's additional steps that you need to do, but decluttering definitely is the first. Right. No, I absolutely agree. And it's funny. I don't know if you saw, it's a show on Netflix. Um, it was about like being a minimalist. Um, and I felt like it was kind of an infomercial. Like, uh, uh, but, but there was, real? A, can, can that happen? Right. Right. But, but, you know, at one point, the guy, he, first of all, I should put out this, that he didn't have any kids and he was a solo bachelor. So it's probably easier for him. Mm -hmm. uh, but he packed up his whole apartment and said, for 21 days, I'm only going to take out what I need out of the box. Um, everything else stays. And after those 21 days, 80% of um, what he packed was still in the box. You know, and it, he said it was just an eye opener for him on like, how much stuff do I really have versus like, what do I really need? So, you know, I think what you said is really important to, to know what you have because you can't pitch and, and purge and donate um, when you don't know how many you know. blankets you have, you know. Um, let's talk about impacts of staging then. So we have decluttered, we've organized, and now does our home look okay? Like our, our buyer's going to look at our home and think like, wow, this looks great. And in, especially when buyers are trained to um, expect HGTV homes and every, everywhere they go, which isn't really a, a, a normalcy. So how does staging impact and, and how does that process work? Sure. So like I mentioned, after the decluttering, I believe the next step is uh, taking a clipboard and going around your home and really assessing every room you walk into like an inspector would. Mm -hmm. This would include repairs, um, things that need uh, to be addressed as far as, you know, we're being removed. Like for example, if I walked into someone's home and I'm going to stage it, 
um, like all the personal pictures on the wall of my family need to come down. Mm -hmm. um, tissue boxes that are laying around the house, even while convenient for that sneeze, um, is really, it's, it really needs to go. It, you, know, you want it to look like that magazine, right? Um, sometimes people keep things in containers uh, in a room, like over in a corner, because it's all, you know, it's all packed up um, and really cl clear containers people like to see through. But what happens is, was when you see through them, it looks really cluttered because all that right. stuff's in there. So you can take like white printer paper and put on the inside of the box and mm -hmm. it helps not see all the way through. So you're looking at, you're looking with a really critical eye of inspecting these rooms and then obviously going back. And part of that is, you know, staging it and getting rid of those personal um, items, uh, diplomas on the wall, uh, anything that would, you know, you want to prepare a home by staging it so that the other party looking at your home can mentally move in your home. Right. And that's critical. They've got to picture their life unfolding in that home. Um, and you can do that. Like one of the best things I love to tell cl our clients that were actually packing them up and they're getting ready to move. I'll say, and a realtor may tell you this, but it's like one of my things I love to do is when you are getting ready to show your home and you, the realtor says, hey, get out of the house, you know, someone's coming. Take a little bit of a cup of vanilla you know, extract, throw it and put your oven on a real warm temperature and throw some of it in it. And girl, I'm telling you, it makes like a fresh homemade baked cookies. And I'm like, I'm sold. I want to bake in this kitchen right now. Okay. So those little things really help uh, with the staging um, and, and making sure you, you know, I love to use what you have instead of going and buying things. But sometimes you do have to buy a few pieces. Right. And so, you know, for staging and and planning for people to come in and walk through, what tips do you have for parents or people with pets, um, but mostly more kids? Like what do you do with all their toys uh, and how can you develop something where you can hide their stuff quickly? Because sometimes you don't have a lot of notice. Well, if you give them access to all of it, they're probably going to get into all of it. So I would say reduce it, number one, reduce the things. And that's part of staging is, is you know, after you've, after you've decluttered uh, and removed some of those things, pack up what you what you really don't need. So like what that minimalist show that you were talking about, uh, pack up what you really don't need. It. The kids don't, they can live without some of their toys for a period of time. There's plenty of sticks and dirt in the backyard. Let them just go out there, right? So, uh, you know, don't give them access to all of it. And then see if you can use um, baskets, repurpose furniture uh, to hold different things. I mean, you can have Legos in the living room and still have them in a basket and look great, right? when you when you walk in uh, to someone's home so uh, again reduce and then use different places to store things in uh, but again if you want to put them in the closets uh, hide them behind something and that's one of the biggest areas I'd say stage your closets too I mean women want the storage I mean guys do too but I'm telling you I look at a home I'm like I see the kitchen that's great let me see the pantry you know, I want right. to storage. So those are some things that I would do to help minimize the toys um, and making sure you prepare those kids that there's going to be quick pickups, you know, little kids, maybe you have a little game out of it and use a timer or something. Right. Who can pick up the most junk and you get a piece of candy? <laughs> That's right. Too bad my kids would total. I should use that all every day, I think. Um, <laughs> so what about, so we have someone that's buying our home and now we have to pack. Like any key tips you have for people in regards to packing all of their stuff? Uh, well, and, and packing, I would say that, you know, you want to make sure that you get the right products to pack. For example, if you run to like a Lowe's or Home Depot type hardware store, um, not all of their boxes are heavy duty and not all boxes are created equal. Uh, even wrapping paper, like that white cream colored wrapping paper that you use, uh, it'll be thinner in smaller pieces when you buy it at stores like that. So I would recommend um, trying to find, you know, of course a moving company is going to take care of you, but they're obviously going to be pricier, even though they throw in free moving supplies, they're going to be pricier. But like with our company, we offer our clients the actual discount at wholesale rate for all the packing supplies. And, and the great thing about it is, you know, when you go to an actual supply company, and sometimes even individuals can go in there uh, and still get better deals than U-Haul and other places like that and get a variety. But get quality stuff. I mean, this is your possessions in your home. And I always say, use paper, paper, paper. Paper is pennies, pennies. 
but think of it as insulation insurance for your most precious items and don't be fearful of, of using enough paper to keep um, you know those things packed uh, label really well um, not just what's what room it goes into but some significant items um, and then one of the biggest things about packing is whatever is first on the truck is the last off the truck so you want to coordinate where you're moving to with your mover of what needs to actually what rooms need to go actually on the truck first because if things are coming off first when you're unloading those rooms can go ahead and be getting set up first and uh and not and you're not waiting on well i need that very thing that's in the back of the truck so deal coordination is really critical for moving in very uh quickly right and then so when you are ready to uh, begin the process of having someone help you organize or finding a stager what are key things you should be looking for are there certifications are there what else besides just a review uh, or asking your friend which i know friends and family it's like the go-to but like they might recommend someone but like how do you sniff these people out how do you know they're qualified and good at what they do yeah well um i think that the number one place that we have been able to be successful is with people like realtors be honest with you realtors they're putting their name on the line to uh give recommendations for other people that can help them and if you can team up with a great realtor, if you can try, even even calling a real estate company, you know their ideas. You may not be the person that's going to use them to sell your home right now, but boy, you're going to remember them if they give you a great resource down the line. Mm -hmm. And so they have really vetted a lot of their people. They've used them extensively. Um, so if you have a realtor or someone that has a realtor friend, uh, I would absolutely go there first because they've probably used them and recommended them a, a whole lot. Um, you know, as far as certification goes, obviously you can't go wrong in most cases with a person with a certification. Um, I'll be honest, our we don't have any certified in well, maybe one person we have certified in staging. Um, but we hire for the organizing first, and then we look for um, interior designers. We look for those heavily with an eye for decor. We actually make them produce like projects they've done. I want to know if they have the eye for it. And, um, and then I put them on jobs to see if they do it and they blow clients away uh, with what they can do. Christmas decorating, it's a massive, massive industry of making things look beautiful. So I would definitely start with the realtor first and then um, I would not only ask them how many years they've been in business, but how much they work. That's critical. Someone that does it as a side gig and like, you know, on a weekend once a week and makes some extra money because they work a full-time job may not, be have the experience even though they've been in it for 10 years right you know you have to look at that right like 10 years but doing it like once or what's, twice a month it's like twice really, a month right yeah, it's like what two years experience really when you look exactly. at it so no, that so really you, makes sense yeah that makes sense and then it, this is a side comment i don't know if i told you i was going to ask you this question but i noticed that you started um cleaning services too uh which totally makes sense and i i need you to tell me how how do I get my bathtub to look white again? Like what, what, what is the secret? Like, what am I missing? I don't know. Elbow grease. It's elbow uh, grease. No. Is, it, is it baking soda? Like what am I missing to, and our bathtub's not even that old, but I'm like, what, why is it so stained? Like, what do I do? What am I doing wrong? Well, uh, we, I, we've obviously went through a lot of products to find out what we can use. It's both, you know, as safe as they can be for our cleaners and obviously our clients. And we don't want to use bleach on a very limited basis, if ever, um, because, because it's so strong. Mm -hmm. But we use a product called Scum Bum, and you can probably find it online. It's not sold in stores, but it's through, made through a manufacturing company. And that, and we use something that's called Pro Scrub, which is very similar to like uh, Soft Scrub. Uh, magic erasers are great too to get that stuff off of there those are like even the generic magic erasers are outstanding uh, to use they will get off permanent marker from wallpaper they're so good just you know do the small test area first uh, but yeah we've opened um, two different businesses I got get organized and get cleaned uh, the work is performed by two different you know people groups that are trained in that industry uh, but owned and managed by the same the same people and so um, yeah, I, it's great. I'm out, I'm, I've been cleaning homes lately. Just like when I started out organizing homes, I'm cleaning homes. I'm like, really? I'm like, 
girl, you got to get in there and, and learn what your people are learning. So you, you, you got to know it. You cannot be the one that's just saying, do it this way. You've got to actually try it and make adjustments to your company. So you, you see what the employees see. Right. And I think that's like the best leadership is if you're, if you're in there getting dirty with everybody else, you know, that's just the best person to be working with because yeah. you understand and you know exactly what they're going through and, and what works and what doesn't. Um, any other tips or anything we might have missed in our conversation that you think people, you know, considering buying, selling, moving, staging, cleaning, everything? Yeah, I would, uh, as far as the uh, staging goes and even, even possibly the organizing, and I'm, of course I'm not a tax person, but a lot of times, uh, depending on you know, your, your financial situation with your taxes, a lot of times staging and organizing for the purpose of selling your home is an expense incurred selling your home and is tax deductible. I did not know that. So you really need to ask, just, just keep your antennas up and uh, it's uh, you know, those expenses that are incurred to sell your property uh, can be tax deductible. Again, every circumstances may be different, but don't, you know, think about that when you're just taking those invoices and, you know, putting them in the shredder or whatever, that hand them to your CPA and, and see what they can do for you on the tax side of it. What it, what it does, it, it lowers the overall uh, profit that you made on your home and makes that profit less taxable. So in other words, if you made $100,000 off your home and you spent $5,000 to get it ready, you're, you'd, you'd only be taxed on that $95,000. So again, not a CPA, but that's what I hear out there. Right. I had no idea. I'm really glad you, you mentioned that because that's never, in, and all the people that we've talked to, it's kind of never, maybe it's just assumed, but no one's ever mentioned that. Yeah. So. I'm so glad you're on our panel and uh, the best way to reach you. I know on the panel, we'll have your email and your phone number. Do you have a preference of what's easier for people to contact you? Oh, email, my favorite. I can oh, organize okay. those files and-, and, and I should have, I we'll, should have guessed that. All organization, text messaging, you know, that's a little bit harder and voicemail. I know, I, ha I have so many text messages that I like kind of read and then I'm like, I'll get back to them. And then I don't. And so now I've got like thousands of, of text messages. I'm with and it you. it bumps down. It keeps bumping down. Yeah. And you just go, ah. yeah, And it's like, did you get my text from like two weeks ago? And I'm like, oh God, where is this thing? I don't even know when that was. That's right. So, That's oh right. gosh. Okay. I'm so glad. So if anyone has questions for you, uh, email is the best. And I'm really glad you're on our panel. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.